Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Galactic Science with Arturio Ameris. So today, I'm testing a new microphone. So if things sound different, um, hopefully they sound better. If not, I'll go back to the, the mic I was using and um, maybe eventually I'll, I'll get another one. But today I'm going to work on upgrading some systems and for that I'm going to need ender lilies. And I think I'm to the point now where my little ender lily farm, which has been very useful up to now, is just no longer sufficient to provide the ender lilies that I need. So it's time to start using the fusion chamber to create ender lilies. I'm sorry, ender seeds, ender pearls. <laughs> Those of you that have watched a few of my videos may notice that I tend to do that a lot. I confuse words here and there. It all sounds right in my brain. That's all I can say. Okay, so at the end of the last episode, I had uh, power hooked up to the fusion chamber. Um, I have not yet run a line to the fission reactor. Uh, I could do that, but I'm not going to right now. I'm trying to see if I have any tin here. It doesn't look like I have any tin. But I have plenty of tin over here. So let's just decompose some, shall we? Okay. So for upgrades, I'm going to need a lot more pearls. Um, I'm also going to need some other stuff. I'm trying to remember, do I have, I do have a synthesizer. And I haven't, haven't wired it yet into the collection system. So maybe I ought to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Or I suppose what I could do temporarily is I could just move that synthesizer over here. Maybe that would be a better choice because I don't need... My, my idea here when I set these multiple ones up was there might be time where I wanted multiple resources converted into the, the mine chem. And uh, it might be beneficial to have this kind of system set up where I could process multiple things at once. And that may be true, but maybe four is overkill. And since it would make my life a little bit easier right now at this moment, Let's just grab that synthesizer and let's put it right there for now. And I'll put that module extraction back. And um, I won't necessarily be able to feed this with this chest this way because you have to, you have to feed the synthesis module slightly differently. But, um, the first thing I'm going to need is calcium carbonate. Oxygen. I'll need a lot more than that. Let's grab some carbon. And you know what? I'm going to put these two over here. Because if I remember correctly, yeah, I've got one that's over full. This is part of the reason why I try to automate this stuff, is just to make it a little, little easier. Um, ideally, I would have some sort of system set up to do this automatically, but that takes some time to set up, and I don't have time to do that right now. But as you can see, it's producing. Um, it's not quite 
producing as quickly as I'd like, so I'm just going to grab those. And there's a little bit of carbon left. So let's go grab a little bit more oxygen. Because I'm going to need quite a bit of this. And in fact, let's grab a little bit more carbon. Some of the carbon should have showed up over here, so let's figure out how much. I'm just going to grab that. One stack of carbon. And I think I need uh, two more individual oxygen, so let me just grab those. sure if I have any calcium over here. I may or I may not. I don't have any calcium there. Where did my tin go? There should have been tin that came through here. There's tin. So lock that, lock that, lock that. Um, yeah, okay, I'm, yeah, all this is going to have to get fixed. I'm going to have to do it on camera because it's going to be a, a little bit of a pain. Um, this is the problem where I had two different starting locations, so now it's all kind of messed up. So it's fixable, um, and you can actually use transfer nodes to make it a little bit easier, but still it's, it's a bit of work to do this. Um, also, I can swap barrels out with dollies, but in places where I have two barrels with the same thing, the the real the best way to do it is kind of just do this there was wasn't there phosphorus over here no there wasn't phosphorus over here okay so that one was kind of a waste but the way you would do it is okay like these 12 or 13 a little over 12 stacks of iron you just swap them there and then you put something there and now when iron comes through the system, it'll automatically go there. The oxygen, the way I'm, I'm going to have to fix the oxygen is I'm going to have to put a void upgrade on this one, which is not a huge problem. But it is something I'm going to have to do. Which ones are not locked? Here, hold on one second. See, this is the kind of thing that happens. I say I'm not going to do it, <laughs> and then it kind of drives me nuts, and I end up here I am doing it. Calcium, I'm going to need that in a minute. I'm going to need more of that in a minute. Okay, 
and beryllium. I don't have any more of that right now. I don't have any more zinc right now. Are there any, any other of these that are empty? Calcium. Okay. That will be enough for now. Um, but I am going to need more calcium. Put some of this stuff away that I don't need. Now, unfortunately, when you're trying to get calcium, it's it's a multi-step process, which is part of the reason why I did that. Uh, setting up more than one decomposer. Let's turn this one on. Okay, now they're starting to come through. Hydrogen, all right, I guess that's where hydrogen is going to live now. And this is phosphate, which I think I had a slot for phosphate over here. Ah, I do. And it's empty. And sucrose is empty. And I actually do have a little bit of calcium carbonate. And I'm going to put that right there. And Hydrogen is going to be one of the ones that causes me problems. So the, the phosphate ions, that's going to give me phosphorus and oxygen. And really what I just need right now is the calcium. Is there, oh, okay, yeah, the calcium is coming through. So that's really what we need. That little bit of carbonate. I'll just leave the rest of that in there for now. Actually, no, I'm not because I'm going to need that in a minute when I start making Einsteinium. So this, this should be enough to make me a few stacks of yeah, quite a bit. And then that 8 I'll put there. That's enough for seven, seven stacks of ender pearls, which it won't be able to make them all at once. Um, yeah, okay. Let's see now. Einsteinium. I have notes. I usually have a little notebook that I, I make notes in. Okay, so I need chlorine, and if I'm going to make seven stacks of this, that means I'll need seven stacks of chlorine. One more. So to make Einsteinium, you need lead and chlorine.
and you need the lead and chlorine in equal proportions because that's how the fusion chamber works. You put in an equal amounts of two things and they combine them to make a third. And it's, it's very useful to have um, a periodic table, look one up on Google or something to figure out the recipes for some stuff. Like Einsteinium is, I believe it's a real element. So if you know you, you need something that has um, the little, little number in parentheses as the atomic number, if you know you need something that has an atomic number of 99, you want to look for two stable things that are easy pr to produce that have atomic numbers that add up to 99. So lead and chlorine, 17 and 82, those add up to 99. Those are produced as byproducts of decomposing triple compressed cobble. So that's, that's a very logical thing to use. Now, unfortunately, since my power system is not great, as you can see, this is taking a long time to refill the fusion chamber because I'm only feeding it one eighth of 7,120 RF a tick, whatever, whatever that works out to, um, somewhere around 1,500 RF a tick, which is not a lot. Each one of these reactions takes quite a bit to make. So once you have your Einsteinium, Now, unfortunately, doing it this way is very, very power hungry. <laughs> but this one is hooked up to the power system over here, which is producing 7,000 a tick, but with these older, um, with the mid-tier energy conduits, these it's only dishing out 5,000. And then the rest of these ender pearls will come down here, which is not really where I want them, but I can't really do anything about it. So for now, I'm going to stick them right there. Yeah, and then I'm going to go make some more because I'm going to need very, very large quantities of them. And that, that's still not full yet. So the very, very first thing I need to do is I need to get capacitors in all of these. And that is going to take a while. Okay, now if I leave these in here, all of the Einsteinium that is produced will come out with exactly the same time scale in terms of its radioactivity because these are radioactive. If, if I pull these out, then the resultant ones won't be able to stack. So I'm going to leave them in there until they're finished. And the Einsteinium, um, you don't want to store it up or you don't want to save it. You want, you want to use it pretty quickly. It has a long time, an hour and 11 minutes, so you have some time to work with. Oh, wow, I used up all, all of that carbonate. <laughs> Wow, I'm gonna have to make more carbonate or uh, calcium carbonate. Yeah, I used all of it. Fortunately, I have more calcium. All right, I'll do one more batch and then we'll. This will all happen off camera because, you know, no one wants to wants to sit through it. Okay, now that I've moved everything, oxygen. And carbon, carbon, there's carbon. You can quickly see why it's a good idea to try and automate some of this. Things that you know you're going to use a lot of, it is definitely beneficial to uh, automate as much as possible. Now, oh, interesting. If you combine three oxygen, you get a peroxide ion, which is O2. That seems a little strange. 
I don't think that's, in, in a chemistry sense, I don't think that's correct. Again, it's faster to do this. Now. All right, do I already have that? Yeah, I do already have the calcium. Okay, there we go. Calcium. And, oh, if for no other reason that you don't have to keep swapping recipes, and unfortunately this is not going to make, an, even that's not going to make enough to complete what I have. So that right there, I think we're going to call an episode. Let me put, and I'll do the rest of this offline. Um, thank you all for watching. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, I hope the new microphone is working, uh, that my sound quality improves. If not, I'll go back to the uh, cheap headset that I was using. And uh, I guess I'll see you all next time. Arturio Ramirez, out.